Hello, I am Joyce Harper and I am Professor of Reproductive Science at the Institute for Women's Health at University College London. And my latest book called Your Fertile Years is out in April 2021 and is published by Sheldon Press and is available now to pre-order on Amazon. Each week I am making a short video to summarise each chapter of my book and this video is about chapter five, which is about contraception. If you do not want to become pregnant, how do you prevent it? What I'm going to do in chapter five is explain each method of contraception. I'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each method and how effective that method is. And for this, there is normally two numbers, one percentage saying how effective it is in an ideal situation and then normally a lower number, which how effective it is for the average user, taking into account the ups and downs of daily life. There are many different types of contraception and they may be useful for you at different times of your life. What's really important is to talk to a health professional about the different methods, but chances are your appointment might only be about 15 minutes. So some colleagues at the Institute for Women's Health led by Professor, Professor Judith Stevenson, have made a wonderful interactive website called Contraception Choices. Just Google Contraception Choices and you should find their website. It's an interactive website, so it gives women the chance to put in what's important to them in their method of contraception, and then it will rank the contraception that they recommend. So you might want a contraception that's the most effective, or you may want to be sure that you're not going to get a sexually transmitted infection. Or you may want a method, which means that you don't have to have any periods. You can put these sorts of options into the website and it will rank the different methods for you. So let's just very briefly go through the methods of contraception. So we have condoms, we have the male and the female condom. And these are great because they are a form of contraception, but they also protect against STIs, sexually transmitted infections. The male condom, I think it's, we all know about it, very commonly used, it's 98% effective, but for the average user, it's about 85%. And the female condom, 95% effective ideally, but 79% for the average user. Now there are two types of hormonal methods of contraception. One that releases progesterone and estrogen, and one that's just made up of progesterone. So let's look at progesterone and estrogen. Now, if you have watched any of my other videos or read any of my blogs, you'll know that I find it really important to explain to women about their menstrual cycle and about ovulation. And progesterone and estrogen are the two hormones that are involved in our menstrual cycle. And these contraceptive methods deliver this to disrupt the normal menstrual cycle process and ovulation. So we have the combined hormonal pill and we have the contraceptive patch and we have the vaginal ring. And in an ideal situation, you'll see that each of these is 99% effective, but for the average user between 91 and 92% effective. So the second type of hormonal contraception is the progesterone only methods. And here we have the progestin only pill, the mini pill or the pop. We also have the contraceptive implant and the contraceptive injection, and then intrauterine systems or IUS, the most common one being the Mirena coil. And again, in an ideal situation, these are all 99% effective. It's only the progesterone, progesterone only pill that can um, sometimes have an effect of the user. So in an average situation, it's 92% effective. You'll see the other methods only have one uh, efficiency, and this is because they're not affected by the user. Except the contraceptive injection, which if it's not top, top, topped up in time, can obviously become ineffective. But it's much easier to keep these methods uh, free from any effect of the user. So they're really highly effective methods of contraception. Then we've got non-hormonal methods. So we've got the intrauterine device. I know it looks like um, the coil in the previous one, but this one is not hormonal. It's a copper coil that um, has it affects via the copper and that's 99% effective. 
And then we've got the diaphragm and cap with spermicide. And this is 94 or 84% effective. And this is one of the least effective methods of contraception, but it might be really valid at certain times of your life. Then we've got permanent methods of contraception. So these are only for people who do not want to have children or they've finished their family. And we have male and female sterilization. They're both 99.9% .9 effective and they involve cutting, tying or blocking either the fallopian tubes in the woman or the seminiferous tubules, which deliver sperm from the testes um, through the penis for the men. And for men, if they're having this procedure, they can store some sperm so that if they did want to have children, they've changed their mind later and they want to have children, they could use the frozen sperm or depending how long the vasectomy has been done, it is possible sometimes to reverse the vasectomy. In women, it's not so successful to reverse it, but it's still possible to go through in vitro fertilization to get pregnant if they change their mind. The eggs would not be affected. Then we've got a method of natural family planning. This is um, something that might be really relevant at certain points in a woman's life, as maybe she's starting to get ready to have children and wants to get a bit more in tune with her body. So understanding the, the fertile window and ovulation is really essential for this. And I go through a lot of this in chapter one of my book. So for this, the woman needs to measure a marker of ovulation. And as I've explained in chapter one, this includes measuring her basal body temperature, her cervical mucus, or using an ovulation stick, which measures luteinizing hormone. So you do need to have some training, ideally, to understand this. It is quite complicated. So train it with training, it can be between 93 and 99% effective. And more recently, there is the option to use a fertility app. But if you are going to do this with natural family planning, it's really essential not to use a method, uh, an app method that's only looking at your menstrual cycle dates. Uh, we have a number of publications in this area and we have shown very clearly that just looking at dates and your menstrual cycle is not an effective indication of when you are ovulating. Women are too different. We don't follow a textbook standard. So only use an app or a method where you're measuring a marker of ovulation. But I really would recommend seeing a health professional and talking this through with them so that you can have training of how to use this method. Something that I don't think any of us would recommend is the withdrawal method. Um, it's just got, there's too many complications. I won't go through it. Um, yeah, not 73%. I mean, for this and for natural family planning, there's not really that much good data on how effective they are. So natural family planning, I gave some numbers. You might see some reports that say much lower. The withdrawal method, again, it's, um, there's various figures. So I think for both of these, the figures I'm showing here uh, really need to be taken very lightly. They're, they're not really conclusive uh, data. So if your contraception fails or you ha haven't taken any contraception and you don't want to become pregnant, there are two methods of emergency contraception. There's the IUD, the copper coil, which can be inserted, uh, which is a good method because then that means that the woman is covered for future um, intercourse or there is the oral emergency contraception or the morning after pill, which has to be given, um, but both methods have to be done as soon as possible after unprotected sex. So I hope you found that useful. It was a whistle stop tour of chapter five. There is also a blog as always on my website, globalwomenconnected.com and further information on my personal website, joyceharper.com. So I hope you will Take care with your contraception. And next week, we will be talking about sexually transmitted infections. Thank you very much for listening.